Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Mia, and this is my sign name. This is my sign name, and it became so when I was in California at the School for the Deaf in Riverside. And there was already another student named Mia, and I didn't have a sign name. I couldn't spell it out because another Mia spelled out hers. And someone approached me and said, this should be my sign name because I have creative and really good facial expressions and I'm really friendly. So since then, that's been my sign name. Well, so I am here. I am so honored to be here. I'm honored to be chosen. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you all, I thought that I really wanted to share something that resonates with you. You know, one hour of your time means a lot to me. So I want to give something back, something you can take away with you. So I picked the title, What is the Color of Your Soul? And I don't plan to discuss this in a religious or spiritual sense, but more on a human level. Discussing who you are, how you show yourself in different situations in everyday life. And I picked the picture that you see, the window with the circles spiraling in. It's a beautiful window. And I have a reason for, for choosing this picture. When I was a kid, my family and I would often go to church. And there's a, deaf, a common deaf experience that I had of sitting through these long church services, not understanding anything that was being said. So what I would do is I would look up at the window And they had a mosaic window. And, and I really relate that to my childhood experience. And I thought all those beautiful different colors placed in, in, in a way that creates this beautiful artwork. Turns out I would later become an artist. Another thing that I loved as a kid were mood rings. Do you guys remember those? There were necklaces, earrings. Yeah, they were. I would get so excited for the mood rings. It was like 25 cents to buy one and you could put it on your finger and, and the color would, would match what you were feeling. And at, at that time in my life, I really thought it was magic. I thought, oh my gosh, this, this ring knows me. It understands me. It's amazing. I didn't realize at the time that there's no battery. There's no computer chip inside this ring. It's just plastic. And then growing up, I realized... I, I thought, wow, something so simple and small can, like, like an eight ball. You know those eight balls you, you shake up, you ask a question, it gives you an answer. There's really just so many things that we can rely on to define our feelings, to define what we're thinking. Relying on objects to tell us this. I realized later that it's really important to be able to rely on yourself. To know who you are. To know the meaning of your actions. It was silly, you know, as a young kid, I would get so excited. And now that I'm a grown woman, I know what I want. I don't need this mood ring to tell me. So to understand the color of your soul... You have to think about the body. We have the body. And then we also have the heart on the inside. And somewhere in between the two is our soul. How, how we're born and raised, what we're taught as a child, everything that we go through in life, all of that influences our soul. 
and, and it influences our heart too. But the soul is how you show yourself in the mirror. It's how you show yourself to other people. It's the story you tell and the actions you make and how you impact others. You know, people may forget your words and your actions, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So today I'm going to focus on the soul part of oneself. So when soul searching, you think about what your motivation is, what are your values, your beliefs, your feelings, and how all of that influences behavior or is influenced by behavior. And it's really important to know yourself first before you go through this life making decisions and making choices. If you ignore yourself and you don't take care of yourself and you just try to keep going through life. Well, I think I've lived my life that way, that way, and it did not work out well for me. I struggled and I, I had to learn how to slow down and press pause because your problems won't hide from you. You have to figure it out. You have to figure out, you know, what you're doing. Why are you here? It's a common question that we ask ourselves. What's, what's my purpose? So if you're soul searching, try again to go out into the world after, after really thinking about these things. So soul searching emphasizes three things. There's the thinking and reasoning. And then there's our beliefs, our attitudes, our emotions, our memories that we reflect on. And then thirdly, we have our choices and our decisions. And I want to expand more on choices and decisions. And some of you might think, well, aren't they the same thing? You know, it's the same concept, but actually it's not. They're, they're two different concepts. There's a really, you know, choices and decisions play a huge role in our behavior and how we go through life. Choices are something we think about. We think, is this something I feel comfortable with? Do I like it? You know, what are the pros and the cons? We think about it and then we pick one. We make a choice and it's done. So decisions is what you do with that choice. You think about how it will affect your life and your story. The making your choice, the choice you make has has little impact on on what on your life, but what really matters is your decision. What do you do with that? Who are you going to ask for support? Where are you going to gather information? You make your decision and then you move forward and you experience the result of that decision. I realized, thinking about this, that all these snap decisions we make every day, like what we wear in the morning for work, what we're going to eat, you know, who we're going to invite to the movie, all these everyday decisions, small Life, but then there are life choices. And there's, that's a huge difference. There's a huge difference between these everyday decisions and our life choices. Like what college we're going to go to, which job we're going to apply to, and if we're hired, will we accept? Who, you who we choose to marry. There's all these really important life choices. And we're often so stuck in the moment. If we take a step back and really look at it, we see that it, it really costs our time. It costs our soul. It has cost me quite a lot. So I'm going to share uh, some more of my personal story connected to, related to soul searching and that process. 
and how it was influenced by my life choices. I watched a Facebook video. Oh, I watch a lot of inspirational videos. I like watching people tell their stories and one that impacted me a lot was the story of our timeline, the timeline in our lives. It's like, you know how people play the lottery? They'll buy a lottery ticket and you know wait to see what the numbers are and how much money they made and you know be disappointed if they don't get the money and something that's important to think about is we're already lottery winners we won life we have we have a life right now we already won the lottery we did it That was a really cool, a really good concept for me to keep in mind. I was in looking at a timeline, you know, hopefully a hundred years, maybe less. But whatever you do, and when you look at the timeline, It's more important to see that you're happy than to see if you're doing enough. Or are, are you doing enough to inspire people, to be happy, to change the world? If you're thinking, oh, by the time I'm 30, I have to be married and have a house and a good reputation and make good money. We, see, we don't all have the same timeline, though. Some of us, get things later. I remember one story of an, uh, there was a man who was 80 years old who graduated college. He waited to make money to raise his fam his children and have a family. Then when he was in his 80s, he finally was able to attain his lifetime accomplishment. And it might seem way too late in life for other people, but for him, it meant a lot. So we all have these different timelines and there's no perfect way to go through it and feeling stressed out and worried about attaining these things at a certain time is isn't worth it society often gives us these pressures that we have to do this and do that and know this and you know like college students often feel the pressure to pick a major so that they can find a job and the first year after graduating, they have to find a job. When what really happens is things change. People change their majors, they change their schools, they move somewhere they didn't expect, and that's okay. That happens in this life. It happened to me. Um, this author here, this is one of his best published books, and it's called The Seven Habits of um, High Developing People. And I think it's like a little over $9 at the store. And, you know, you can still see it sold at the stores. And what he wrote in there, I just, it really resonated with me. And I'm going to try to explain that, the concept from his book right now. I'm not a product of my circumstance, my circumstances. I'm a product of my decisions. Now I have a story. I, I was in a hearing family. I'm the only deaf person. And my family can communicate with me. We lip read, I lip read. Um, that's how we communicate, we don't sign. My relationship with my parents was, you know, on the surface it was really good. Yeah, on the surface it was it was a good relationship, but deep down emotionally, 
we weren't able to really have these deep discussions. So when I was seven and I packed, I packed up ready to go to college, I told my, I was 17, sorry. I told my mom I had all these things. I was ready to go. I was packed up and she said, you know, make sure you don't come home as a drug addict or pregnant or anything like that. And I thought, oh, okay. And guess what? I got pregnant. I was 19. And I, was, I was 17 when I came to RIT. Can you, can you imagine how I told my mother? I was typing on the TTY. Uh, luckily, we didn't have FaceTime at the time, so I didn't have to see my mother's face. I just typed it in to the TTY, and I told my mother, and she was shocked. First, she told me, you got to come home. And I said, I, I didn't want to come home. I didn't want to come home because there would be so much pressure and expectations from my family. They would tell me what I should do. They would say, you know, uh, Mia, what did you do this time? And I thought, you know, I'm really happy here at RIT. I had this situation happen. Now 